are beat grids driving you mad in Recklebox, then don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to set beat grids properly in Recklebox. Hi, I'm Dan from Beatmatch Guru. Let's dive right in. Okay, so here we have the beat grid options. So you can see here the button down here. So usually what you'll see is these, like the hot cues and all the different other options. So what you need to do is click on this, this icon here, which takes you to the beat grid edit. Now you've got various different options here. And what I do is usually to understand where the beat grid is, is snapped to, I will then use this area here where you can click in and out of the zoom. So if we zoom in, you can see the beat grids here. So one thing to note about the beat grid is that you'll see every four beats, you'll see a red line. So that represents a bar. So you'll see the bar section here. So it's, see that bar there? That means you, you can count the, the bars as, as the track's going along. So in order to change around the beats, uh, the beat grid and move it so it's more in sync because sometimes what you'll find is the the beat grids are actually not snaps that well most tracks are good actually but it depends how record box record box actually interprets that so here you can see it snapped pretty well but say for example if you wanted to move that closer to here you can use these top buttons here so this one triangle here means that you can shift the whole beat grid to the right. So that means every slice, uh, every slice of the beat grid will move. So this will move it a little bit and this will move it a lot. So say for example, we click, see it slightly moving and then we can move it back. So you can move it very fast or you can move it back fast. Perfect. Okay. What's really important with uh, snapping uh, a beat grid is setting the BPM. Now I know for a fact that this tune here is exactly on point because when I purchased it from Beatport, it says BPM 123, so perfect. The, the trick is, is that sometimes what you'll find is, is that for some weird reason, I find the tracks actually load half time or double time, usually half time. So what you can do is, is use these buttons here to eliminate that problem. I see that actually with drum and bass because uh, 174 BPM, you can go down to half time, which is like hip hop sort of BPM. So for example here, you can reduce the tempo by half and that reduced the amount of beat grids see that beat grid is bigger whereas before that line that line there was actually here so let's go back to that I don't think you would ever want to double it unless it was actually like say 89 BPM and then you can double that to get to where you need but this is a house track so we're sticking at one one two three BPM for now so one one thing to note is that say if you're completely out of sync and, and the bars are like completely out Another way that you can align it is by putting the the audio on that that cursor, which is the the red line there. What I do is then zoom in as much as possible, line that up with the beat, and click on this white and red line. So that sets the first beat of the bar, and there you go. And then it snaps to there. Another way that you can sort of figure out what the tempo is and align the, the beat grids is by using the metronome and also you can tap tap along to the beat so say if you was playing the beat you can tap and see that tempo change so my tapping's not too bad we know it was about 123 We've got to slow down but anyway you get the idea that that helps to then understand how fast that that track is actually at 
and then you can muck about with the beat grids. So what you can do is as well is shrink the intervals manually using these buttons to try and get near to that, that BPM which can sometimes work and I found actually sometimes it doesn't work. It, a lot of these controls can take a bit of getting used to and, and fiddling around. So say if I use this one, what it does is it see the see the bars moving, you can do it that way and in reverse as well. So we can actually get closer. Let's use the big one. There you go. See that's in line now. That would actually be spot on. So you, the the other way you can check it is where it is at the beginning. So it's out of line. So you can see it actually takes a bit of getting used to. I prefer going from the first beat, setting that, and then you see it's sort of in line there. So that's how I do it. My advice is actually to use this beat lock. So once you've you've got that that in there, say put that back to one, two, three BPM, then you can put that beat beat grid back. Uh, beat you can lock in. The audio analysis so that what beat grid won't ever change and then that's that's all good for the future i would say the last thing to note in record box is that the reason why beat grids are important is because when you click on this q which means quantize you can snap to the grid pretty easily when when you click on q so say so the bars here, but we know that first part of the beat grid is here. When you click on Q, it will snap to the nearest grid. See? And that actually looks like it snapped to that as well. So it snaps to the ne nearest uh, beat of the, the grid. So you say if you don't have that, it simply just cues it to wherever that red cursor is. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to see the full record box beginner's guide, then I will put the link in the description and you can click on the video here. Hope you enjoy that. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you.